We're going to go ahead and get started this morning. I uh, got a feeling we got a few people that are cold today. How about you? <laughs> so, thank God for heat. Yeah, it is. Being there for us. Thank God for you all that have showed up here today. I know that it is cold. I know that getting out is a tough thing. So I appreciate your efforts. And uh, again, maybe today you'll just be preaching to the choir, you reckon? <laughs> Nonetheless, let's uh, just agree. Let's have a word of prayer together with all of us while we're waiting. Father God, we just ask you today, Lord, that again you be with any others that will come in here today. And for us that are here, and as we leave here today when we finish, I pray God in our hearts, as Brother Steve was saying, will be fully warmed and God will be safe in our way homes this day. God, let your love and your spirit shine upon us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I do want to thank everybody that helped uh, with the dinner and the preparing of things and clean up for the funeral of Bob Goforth this past week. We appreciate everybody that did that, and I believe the family did also. Also, a sad note, uh, heaven's gain but our loss. Steve Hester, him and Julie, his wife, uh, Julie's mother passed away this week, uh, Maxine Anderson, and they'll be having her service this coming Tuesday, but that'll be up the other side of Indianapolis. So be in prayer for their family as well, especially for Julie and all the immediate ones. Uh, also, tomorrow we'll be having our men's meeting at 7 p.m. If you all would like to come out to that, uh, we'll only be having one a month until March, and then the women will not be having any at all until March. But We'll be having this one, and then we'll be having another one in February until we get into March, depending on how the weather stays after that also. Also tonight, we're going to be having a, a baptismal service. Todd Padgett, he's going to be baptized tonight. Uh, again, uh, future husband of Serena Fleener there. So we, 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 somebody said we're going to move back to 14 Mile Creek. Is that all right, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me about doing that one time, and I just kind of didn't know if I wanted to or not. So, but anyway, but no, we'll be having that service tonight. Come back and be with us, be supportive of this young man. Uh, again, he's getting ready to start a new life with a husband and wife and two, and then also he's made his profession of faith and uh, making his commitment as baptismal tonight also. Uh, as far as hospitals, I don't know, well, I'll just go on from there. Let me ask first of all, have we had any birthdays this week? Martha? Barb? Anybody else? Lloyd, did you have your hand up? Okay. Anybody back here? Let's say happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. here right so but either way uh, also has anybody you know of been in and out of the hospital from the from the church congregation and again I haven't mentioned anybody because I didn't know any this week okay well we'll leave it at that for now I've got plenty of prayer requests I was just trying not to go over two or three times again and again but uh, right now I'm going to ask us I see Kevin ain't here today is uh, our little buddy Jaden, is he back here? I know he likes to do that. If you all go ahead and get him. And uh, again, we'll do that here in a minute. But he likes doing the, again, the Pledge of Allegiance when Kevin isn't here. We appreciate that. Ronnie used to do it. He has a hard time getting up on his feet, but we appreciate him and others for that. And again, as I was saying, I appreciate everybody that's come out here in this weather today. And again, I know it's not the ideal time to get out, but. Uh, you know, this would be a good time for all of us just to encourage each other in the Lord. And uh, when the weather does turn, let's see that we can get other people coming with us. Invite them not only to come to church, but invite them to the love of Jesus that's in our heart. Praise God. So, anyway, we're going to do that. Here comes our little fella. <laughs> Jay Clements is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you like to stand with us. Come over here, young man. You ready? <laughs> okay. Turn toward the flag. Let's all do the pledge with him. You ready? Put your hand over your heart and say the pledge with us. 
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Give it a hand. <laughs> right now, Steve's going to be the lead us in music. Keep going now. Or you can stay up there either one. <laughs> so, you better go. <laughs> Just a word, my mother-in-law was one of the most godly women I ever knew. And I knew every day, every single day, that there was a godly person praying over my life every single day. And we're going to miss her. Uh, you wasn't around her too much until you heard about Jesus. It didn't take a few minutes until she was telling you about Jesus. So, uh, We don't sing because we need a warm-up before the sermon. That's not why we sing. We don't sing so everybody have time to get to their seats. Hopefully you're here in your seats when we start. We don't sing because we're not entertainers. You know that. We, we're not entertainers. We're not up here to entertain you. We don't sing because we want you to be entertained. We sing because God is good. Amen. We sing because God is worthy. We sing because it's an act of unity in which we declare to each other and to the world it's the glory of God, the gravity of sin, and the grandeur of grace. We sing to praise Him, not anybody here. Amen. Sing this chorus with me.
at somebody, wave at somebody. Tell them how glad you are that they, they made it to you. Through turn to page 329. <laughs> 329. <laughs>
Cindy, it's good to see you and others here with you today. Uh, Dalton and uh, Dalton. Uh, Lily. I want to say little bit, but I knew better. And your name, ma'am? Sandy. Sandy. Sandy, good to have you all here with us today. I don't think we've got a lot of others that haven't been here for a while, but anyway. Right now we're going to get ready for prayer. Uh, we'll get a couple of you up here to do the anointed. That'd be probably fine today. And again, as I said earlier, we want to thank everybody that helped this past week with the uh, dinners and stuff, dinner for the Go Forth family and all who were part of the church. And then again, remember the Anderson family, Maxine Anderson is Julie's mother that passed away. And also remember we have a men's meeting tomorrow night. And also again, our baptismal service tonight. Be pray for God today. Pray that again, God's just going to touch him in a special way. And uh, we want to baptize him in water and pray God will just baptize him afresh with the Holy Ghost. And that would be good for him and good for all of us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Asking prayer for my brother-in-law that had his knee replaced this week. He is doing well. We're going to keep him in prayer. The Vern Bikins was supposed to have a knee replacement, but she's having some problems with her uh, heart rhythm, so we want to pray for her. She'll be having some tests on the 23rd about that. And then also Robert Hall, one of Nickens' daughter, she's going to be having uh, surgery on her neck on the 24th, and then Judy Hall is going to be having a procedure as well as some tests, so we'll pray for these. And still praying for George Roberts that had a stroke, praying for continuous healing for him. Greg Winninger, uh, again, his family used to sit back here in the back a long time ago, Mary Coomer and her daughter, granddaughter, and great-granddaughter. But he's in ICU, or he has been, unless he got out in the past two days. He's been in there for quite some time with some, I think, pretty serious cancer issues. Also, Gary and Tracy Higgin, it's good to see them in here this morning. We're going to keep praying for, uh, again, Gary, especially with his knee recovery. Pray for his continual healing. Uh, Geneva Gregory, still praying for your mom, of course. Leon Benton, he's had some back issues and said he was supposed to go see a surgeon the other day, so we want to keep him in prayer. Still praying for Richard Tungate. Also for Tabitha James, has got some surgery coming up in the future possibly. St uh, Stella Henry for her husband and daughter. Our grandfather Bob Shepard. And also for my uh, aunt Gloria and Rick also as they've been taking care of him. Keep them in prayer as well. Still praying for Bobby Doss and his family. Bill Riley, we seen him here at the services past week with uh, Bob's passing. And again, we need to keep Bill in, in prayer and keep holding him up. Uh, David, Dallas, and we're going to pray for them and their brother-in-law, Alex. And uh, Dallas, you did say he was showing us some improvement. Your brother-in-law? She said that he was, but now he's in the intensive care, but still in coma. He's still, okay, I thought he'd come out, but he's still in a coma. So we need to keep him in prayer. Alex, their brother-in-law, uh, still praying for the violent Eddie Bodkins, uh, for David and Melanie Wire, Bonnie and Steve Shaw, Iris Bohannon. Uh, Tracy's mother, uh, Joanna and David Webb, also for Karen and Chris Grayson, also my wife Sandra and Wayne's wife Janet. Still praying for all those dealing with cancer, uh, Doug Field's sister, Abby Kendrick, Pam Wiggum, uh, Melissa Stein, and also for Greg Winninger. Greg Hester, he got off his treatments, didn't he? Give the Lord a hand for that. Still praying for a Jeff Aaron. He needs a miracle. From what they said, there's not anything they can do this round, but he's had some miracles in his life before young ages, middle age, so we just want to keep praying that God will touch that. Still with heart conditions, Melanie Wire, uh, Judy Hall, Lee Seward, Larry Bauer, uh, Travis Barrett, and again for Donna and Molly, Donna and Molly Summers and Tanya Prince, Brenda for her and her grandson Micah. Uh, for the Bodkins, Whitlocks, Days, Jeffries, and Shaw's, all these families, and your family and my family as well. And still praying for revival in our land. Also for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. And again, just a move of the Holy Spirit. How many would like to see a great move of the Holy Spirit in our churches today? I'm not talking about just because we don't have enough people, but because we all need a move of God in every one of us. And again, I believe God wants to do that. We just need to, again, just yield ourselves to Him. 
let Him do a work in all of our lives. I'm praying and believing that for this 2024, not just because of the calendar, but because I need a move. How about you today? Amen. Amen. Need a good move of the Holy Spirit in our life. Prayer request up here. I have a few friends that are having fighting cancer. Others? Charlie? My nephew passed away. My niece is her. Oh, this not to no. Oh, okay. down in Kentucky. Oh, okay. I was thinking Jane, but you're not talking about him. Okay. Anybody else? Your grandson Cameron, right? Yeah, his chest was a twenty-three. What's that mean? Good or bad or middle or? Well, we'll find out. What's going on? Oh, you said that. I thought you said the test. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you'd give me a grade. I didn't know. Well, I apologize. Yeah, I didn't know about that. I'm not a doctor, so forgive me. <laughs> Gary, I'll shut up for a minute. I started the therapy on my knees all this coming week. I just need some help get through that. I don't want to worry about that. Amen. Amen. Others, Mike? Myself, friends and family, uh, two unspoken, uh, and for the Hester Anderson, mm -hmm. and also for Bob Goldforce family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Others? We're going to be traveling. Uh, and, uh, funerals, I think the high up there is supposed to be 90 degrees on Tuesday, mm -hmm. so just praying for our cars keep running and make it up there and back. Does she have, your wife, does she have siblings? She's got uh, her she sister, sister Diane, she, her brother's up from Florida. Oh, okay. I couldn't remember her. Jim Anderson. Okay, absolutely. Prayer request over here, Ronnie. Myself, friends and family, and my mother. Absolutely. My mother. Absolutely. Steve? There's a lady over the river crossing that just found out she has cancer, and it's something for me. Okay. Right for her. All right. Myself, family, especially Jeff Aaron, and I have three young spoke. Okay. Rick, did you? Steve Shaw, family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tracy? For the loss and all the cancer patients, and also uh, my mom is on oxygen and she wants off of it, so she needs prayer to get off of it when she goes next month. Hopefully she'll be able to get off of it. Yes. And also for Barbara Christian, uh, she's dealing with some cancer. And uh, for Gary and also for Chuck and Jessica. Absolutely. Others? Brenda? Myself and family and friends and our homeless people right now. Uh, we were in Jeff one day last week and there were so many people with signs saying, can you help me? And I didn't have any to give them. I did have a couple of bottles of water in the car, so I gave them that, you know. But I just don't know how our country can put our vets and people on the street and take care of other people's countries. And it just irritates me. I just pray God daily that these families that are not under roofs are protected from this cold weather. Because yeah, one of them is a little bit of kid. Yeah. And mm -hmm. She said she's going to try to get into the Louisville. White side or Hilly in place. Yeah. yeah. I asked her if I could take her and she said no, she was fine. Absolutely. Mike? <clears throat> Grandkids, myself, family, friends, and couple as well. Okay. Others? Prayer requests? Over on this side? Uh, now when I have a praise report, um, you all have been praying in the church for my dad for a long time, uh, for years now, since 2020, and with his homeless situation. And actually, um, this past week, him and my brother closed on a property in Meade County. It's 17 acres, and my brother's going to take the you know woods part of it and turn it into farmland, and he's going to move down here with his wife. But my, there's a pole barn with acreage on that land, and my dad's, it's already been finished, but he's going to make it into a home. He's going to add furniture and stuff, and it's just been a true blessing. My sister's going to get to live there, too, and, you know, she's expecting. So God has shown up, and, and he got his uh, disability, and he's got disability back pay. So the Lord's been faithful to him, and I just want to praise God for, for taking care of that situation. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Other prayer requests? 
Betty, Michelle? Family and friends, and especially with healing. Amen. Amen. Anybody else this morning? Prayer request. How many would uplift his hands for yourself or someone else? Again, God sees those hands. As we stand this morning, anybody would like to come down and be anointed for yourself or someone else? You're more than welcome to do so. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me close to His side. The blood stream for each new day. He will make something don't happen, Lord. Again, their life here on this earth is only going to last so long. And I know that's for all of us, but even shorter for them. I do pray for Greg Whitaker today. I, I pray for Jeff Aaron. Hey, Wiggle. For Greg Castle, we're glad that he got off his uh, treatments. Just pray that he'll uh, continue to touch. Lord, for those with their hearts, for Melody Wire, Judy Hall, Lee Seward, Larry Bauer, Leon Benton with his back and his heart. Travis Barrett, we lift him up in prayer. I pray for all of our families today, Lord. I know I mentioned the ones, but all of us, Lord, we have loved ones, Lord, that uh, need to know you. Some that do, and I just pray they'll know you better. We uh, pray for revival, Lord. Revival in our land, but also in our hearts. Great things will happen to each and every one of us, young and old alike, Lord. 
pray for our youth, Lord. I know we don't have big numbers back there, but at the same time, every one of them, Lord, we just pray, God, that you'd do a move in their hearts, Lord, as well as us in middle age and older age. God, just touch us with your spirit. I do pray for the uh, unspoken shut-ins everywhere, caretakers. Pray for those that have had loved ones to pass away. Uh, we pray for Steve and Julie and others as they'll be traveling for his mother-in-law's funeral this week. I uh, pray for the Go Forth family. Uh, again, for the wife and the son and daughter and all the family, Lord. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren. We've got, again, some of them in here this morning, Lord. We just pray, God, that uh, they feel the love and the power of the Holy Spirit upon them. We pray for, again, the family there with the Andersons, that God, they'll do the same. And we thank you, Lord, for these lives that represent in Christ. Again, Lord, for Laverne Botkins needing to get things in order with her heart rhythm that she'll be able to have her knee worked on. I pray that that's going to happen soon. Robert Hall has got neck surgery coming up. Also for Judy Hall has got some things happening with tests as well as procedure. Again, for every hand that went up here today, for every need, for every care, for those that will be watching and listening another time, we agree with them. Pray for a great move of your spirit in our morning and evening service. Pray for Todd tonight as he'll be baptized. Pray for the spirit of the Lord to rest upon him in a great way. And him and Serena as they're about to start a Again, in marital, just touch and move them. Be with us all. Be with this service. Be with our country, for America, for our leaders to turn back to you, for this nation to truly once again be a nation under God, with the liberty of Jesus Christ. Pray for our military, police departments, fire departments, metal departments, EMSs, and farmers. For all those that protect and serve us, that you'll protect them. Again, for this time together, we ask your blessings upon it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. For the close to his side. Love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. You may be seated, you please. You want to do the offering. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to give to the work of the Lord today. We pray your blessings upon tithe and offering today. For those that give as well as those that have not to give, again, Lord, may everything that we do be done to your glory and honor. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
is a light to my path. His, His words lie hide in my heart. But I might not sin against God. All scripture is inspired of God. Blessed are the doers. Not to hear his own way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give Brenda a hand as she comes up for first, especially this morning.
Luke chapter 2, verse 21. I want to entitle this message today, My Eyes Have Seen Thy Salvation. <laughs> that only happened by the presence of the Lord, Lord Brenda. Yes. <laughs> Luke 2, 21 says, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus which was so named to the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of our purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, Two young, or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation or the comfort. Isn't that what a consolation prize is? A comfort? What comfort was they waiting for? They were waiting for their Messiah. It says, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Ghost was upon him. I don't know how long this man had been waiting. But I don't think he was a young man. Commentary said that, again, they've got different definitions about who this was, but evidently he was in his elderly years. And I don't know how many times he'd come to Jerusalem waiting for that consolation, waiting for that comfort, waiting for the Messiah to show up. I'm sure he'd come on what they call Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement every year. But he had been waiting for the Messiah. He'd been waiting for the one that can bring salvation. And as we read here, it says... He couldn't die until he saw the Lord's Christ. He'd been waiting to pass away. He knew that the Messiah was going to come. And he knew that He was going to show up there. God, through the Holy Ghost, has showed him that. Well, would the Holy Ghost would show some people something today, don't you? Yeah. I'm talking about some lost and messed up people that need to know before you die, you need to know the consolation of your soul, your comfort, your Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't say religion. I, I didn't say church doctrine or denomination. No, I, I said the Messiah. And I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Simeon had been waiting for that. And it says, And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And verse 26 says, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not, as I said, see death before that he had seen the Lord's Christ. I've got some people I know that I hope they don't see death until they know the Lord's Christ. How about you today? Amen. I hope they don't leave this old world until they know that they know that they know that they know that everything's well between them and the Lord Jesus Christ. How many in here today say, I believe in heaven? Amen. Amen. I also believe in hell. Amen. I don't like hell. <laughs> don't get me wrong. But just as sure as there's a heaven, there's a hell. And I'm not really concerned about, I don't want to have nothing to do with hell, but I am concerned about people not going there. And for people knowing the way. Isn't it nice when you can sense the presence of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit? It says it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he's not going to die until he sees the Lord's Christ. I'm so glad that God gave me 27 years before I got saved not to go straight to hell. I don't know what your story is. How old was you when you got saved? How old was you when you gave your heart life to Jesus Christ? Somebody waited on me. How about you? Amen. And it was the Holy Ghost. It was God's Holy Spirit. It says, 
Verse 27, He came by the Spirit unto the temple, and when, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for Him after the custom of the law, then took He up in His arms, and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us, Thy servant, depart in peace according to Thy word. For mine eyes have seen Thy salvation. I finally seen what I needed to see. I finally know what I need to know before I go. I finally met the one that I was waiting for. I finally got the way into eternity. That man, I'm sure, had followed the works of the law. I'm sure he followed the custom. It says he was, again, a, a just man and all that. He was doing what the law said, but the law was preparing him for something yet to come. The law was preparing him to show them, as we talked in our Bible study class this morning, the law couldn't save nobody. All that it did was show you that you're a mess without Jesus. I have a hard time following the Ten Commandments. How about you? There's even two that it says you can sow them all up. And that's a tough one too. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and body, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Love and life helps me a little bit there. Because <laughs> I know you've got to love everybody, but there's something you're never probably going to like because of their character. But at the same time, you do got to love even those that hate you and despise you. I'm so glad that God loved me enough to forgive me of my sins. How about you today? Amen. And if He can forgive me of what a mess I was, can I forgive some of the messes that other people cause us sometimes? Oh, these people are driving you nuts sometimes, isn't there? You still got to got to bless them. But at the same time, getting back to the word here, it says, "For mine eyes have seen thy salvation." I want you to turn your Bible with me also to John's Gospel, the ninth chapter. John chapter 9, verse 1. We've used this story and many others have. I can't remember the last time we did, but probably in a Bible study. But John chapter 9, verse 1 says, And as Jesus passed by, again, He's in adulthood now, He's in ministry and everything else. We've Fast forward a little bit here. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. Couldn't see. The man was blind. His physical eyes wasn't working. He never had seen anything with his physical eyes. How many of you know that we're born blind too? Not physically, but spiritually. Until we see the Lord's Christ, until we see the Messiah, until we see salvation, we're spiritually blind. The Bible tells us that the gospel is hid from them who Satan, the God of this world, has blinded their minds that they cannot see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But at the same time, our eyes were opened when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Our eyes need to stay open as we've got a whole lost and dying world that can't see that. It says, going back, it says, and as Jesus passed by, He saw a man which was blind, which was blind from his birth, and His disciples asked Him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? <laughs> wow. What did that baby do to cause blindness? What did that baby do to, to cause sickness in its body? What did that baby do? You know, sometimes Christians are really quick to judge others, aren't we? Man, I can spot out the sin in your life in a heartbeat. <laughs> but how about spotting the sin in our own life sometimes? You know, when you point your fingers, you got a few pointing back at you sometimes. I'm not saying live like hell and go to heaven because that's not possible, but I'm saying before we start judging other people, something's happening. Oh, they've got to have messed up. They've got to sin. They've got to have done something. Something caused that. And don't get me wrong because there is places in the Bible that talks about, 
you know, go and sin no more lest the worst thing come upon you. You can't put all your eggs in the same basket. I know many times if you drank like a fish, your liver might have a problem. If you smoke, you can't see straight. Your lungs may have, you know, there's just things. And again, I'm not saying it's always the problem, but at the same time, they can cause things. But we're talking about a little baby. I mean, he's grown up now, but again, they're looking at this like something happened. Isn't it amazing when something bad happens, we always say an act of God? <laughs> Tornadoes or some kind of a hurricane, that's an act of God. Just ask your insurance company. They may not say God no more, but if they do, they'll say act of God. It's God caused it. It couldn't be helped by mankind. Uh, isn't it amazing we can say that about the bad things, but what about the good things? <laughs> when something happens, when somebody gets spared from dying in a car accident, when somebody that's an act of God. <laughs> somebody just, you know, got out of the water almost drowned and they were saved. That's an act of God. No, no, the lifeguard. No, it's an act of God. We're always quick to put the act of God on the bad things, but what about the good things? That's why I don't watch the news very often. <laughs> I do watch it occasionally, but it's for the weather more than anything, because there's not a whole lot of good news on there anymore, is there? But anyway, they're wondering why, why this man had been born blind and verse 3 said Jesus answered neither had this man sinned nor his parents and again he's not talking about the man had never sinned period but he's talking about this sickness is not because of sin neither had this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him that the works of God should be made manifest in him manifest in him this work isn't for everybody that's looking necessarily, although it'll be a testimonial. This manifestation is for that old boy that's blind. This manifestation is for this old boy that hasn't ever been able to get around. I mean, he's begging. I mean, he's doing things that's hard to do. I mean, it, his life has been cruel and, and bad, but he's, God's doing this for a manifestation to him. You know, it's good that it's going to be a testimony to people. It's good that it's going to be in the Bible for thousands of years. But it's also good that old boy that was blind, all of a sudden something took place in him. I never had physical blindness, but I've had spiritual blindness, as I said, we all have. Boy, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. How about you? I'm so glad that the Lord opened my blinded eyes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that the Lord took, again, the darkness and turned it into light. Folks, I'm not perfect, but He's still working on me and He's not giving up, and I don't want to give up neither to you, right? I want to be all I can be until the day I leave this old world and then I know where I'm going. How about you? Do you believe that today? Do you believe that you've got a heaven to gain and a hell to shut? Do you believe that you've got a God that when you close your eyes on this side of glory, you're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ? Every word. Amen. Amen. Our brother Bob, your mother-in-law Maxine, there's been others this week that I, I can't remember all their names, but people that have closed their eyes to this whole world. And I believe what I read when it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I believe that those people that have accepted Jesus Christ, when they opened their eyes on the other side, it was just a split moment. They was in the presence of God. I want to be in the presence of God right here. How about you today? Again, I, I want to be ready for heaven one of these days, but I want heaven to be prepared for me right here also and you also because I, I know there's a lot of people that need to get right with God. I know there's a lot of people that don't have a clue what it means to be saved. They think you're nuts when you talk about salvation. They think you're crazy. You know, uh, you know, you turned over a religion. You, you got whatever. You got that whatever. Something ain't... But anyway, we'll talk about that as we read on here. It says, verse 4 says, I must work the works of Him that sent me while this day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus 
spoke, and he spat on the ground and made clay a spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Salaam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed, and did what? Came sin. His eyes were opened up. He went down in the water and come back up seeing, didn't he? The neighbors therefore and they, verse 8, which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. <laughs> they didn't recognize him. You sure this is really him? Man, he was a dope smoker and a half. Man, he drunk booze till he couldn't street, see straight. I mean, he messed around with the women every street you could go. I mean, this this person wasn't good. <laughs> you sure that you sure you didn't put a mask on this person? I know I'm going a little bit beyond the scripture there. I, I know I'm going, but at the same time, isn't that just spiritual blindness? When somebody really gets born again, you notice something. I'm talking about really born again. I'm not talking about somebody shook the preacher's hand or uh, said one of those pseudo prayers to get out of a drunk driving charge or get their wife to take them back because he's divorced. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody, and they can be, was serious about giving their heart and life to Jesus Christ, and all of a sudden something happened inside of their heart. I mean, they got born again, changed by the grace of God. Old things were passed away, and all all things become brand new, glory to God. All of a sudden, the things they used to think was nothing but nonsense. I'm talking about loving your brothers yourself, loving that person that treats you like a dog, loving that person that just can't despise you. You love them anyway. And then you begin to hate sin. You begin to despise things that you used to cling to. I know we as Christians, we still have the ability to sin. We still have the ability to mess up. But at the same time, we're not clinging to those things. Matter of fact, my heart's broken when I mess up. How about you? My heart's messed up when I don't feel like I'm doing right with God. I'm not telling you I don't ever have those spells, but I'm telling you when I say something I shouldn't say and think about it, it's like, God, forgive me. And I'm not just talking about saying something bad to somebody on the street. I'm talking about even bad thoughts that I carry too long. How about you? But I'm glad that I know that I've got a Savior that when I call upon Him and say, Abba, Daddy, that means help me, that He forgives me. And He can take out that messed up stuff out of you and me anytime we do, fellow. Not a license to sin, but things happen in our life that we're not proud of. It says, Therefore said they unto him, How were the eyes opened? <laughs> what was that song, Steve? Asked the crippled man, he went running. <laughs> Just asked the blind man. He asked saw the blind all. man, he saw it all. The deaf man, he heard it all. How about asking the person that got saved? I don't know how it happened, but I know it happened. I don't know exactly what he did, but I know he did something. And I'm so glad he did. He said, he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes, and, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Salaam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. <laughs> they brought to the Pharisees him that before time was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. They're mad because he healed on a religious day. And don't get me wrong, again, the Jews did have a Sabbath. And again, I know that there's a Sabbath for us. We're in a rest with God right now. Every day of our life as a Christian, but at the same time, Again, they're more worried about the ritualistics of a religion than they are about Christ touching them. You know, you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. But the Bible also says if your ox falls in the ditch on the Sabbath, get him out. 
If you see your neighbor's ox fall in a ditch on the Sabbath, get them out. Is a person not more important than an ox? A person that's been blind all their life and they can be healed that day, do you think they're really concerned whether it's Saturday or Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday? They just want healed, glory to God. It's great. But these religious people, they're all stuck on trying to bombard him because they did this on the Sabbath day. And they were just jealous of him because he had authority. But that's beside the fact. It says, Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes and washed them do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How... Can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Wow. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he opened the blind, opened thine eyes? He, he said he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that received his sight. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son? Who you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? <laughs> His parents answered him and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means he now seeth, we don't have a clue. We don't know. I don't know how he quit drugs and alcohol. I don't know how they quit messing around. I don't know how they got on a different path. I don't know how they started loving Jesus. I don't know how they started getting their life in order. I don't know how. I mean, I know what the bird, like, bird dog was like all his life. He's a pretty rough critter. She was a pretty rough gal. Whatever. Putting it in simple terms for us on the other side. But at the same time, that person, I, I, I know that they were my child, but something happened. <laughs> something took place to change their life. Even the family members didn't know. Do you have family members that don't know what happened when you got saved? They don't understand why you won't run around with them no more and, and do the things you used to do and be a part of the things you used to be a part of? That's because they don't know the power of God. They don't know what Jesus has done for you, but we do, don't we? It said, These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Wow. Therefore said his parents, He is of age, ask him. They again called... They again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man's a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he's a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, I now see. I don't know how he did it. I don't know why he did it. All I know is, glory to God, he did it. <laughs> he opened my blinded eyes. He opened your spiritual eyes, hopefully. I once was blind, but now I was see. I once was lost, but now I'm saved. How about you? They said, then said they to him again, What did he to thee help me that eyes? He answered, I've told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples. That was a shot in the dark for them, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Are you wanting to follow him too? And we know that they weren't, was it? Man, what in the world's going on with them? Then they revealed it, reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is? And yet he hath opened my eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. 
There is one thing God will hear a sinner say, isn't God be merciful one to me? A sinner, I need salvation. I know God don't hear with favor, but at the same time, I know God can hear anything He wants to, can He? Mm -hmm. I believe He's heard me a few times when I've been in some crazy car accidents. I was with people drinking the wrong stuff, of course, and cried out because I knew if I died, I wasn't going to heaven. <laughs> I knew I wasn't ready. And you say, well, why did God spare you? I believe God knew my heart where it was headed for. And I believe God knows your heart too. He's predestined where we're not. That means He already knows the past, present, and future, but I don't. I know that if I'm lost and die, <laughs> that I'm headed for hell. But I also know that if I'm saved and I'm right with God, I'm headed to heaven. And I want other people to know the same thing. How about you? Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. <laughs> you ain't allowed in our church no more. You're talking about Jesus. We want you out of here. This past Thursday, after the funeral service of Bob Goforth, we were standing up here, and a gentleman come by here. I don't know where he was from. I don't think he was from around here. But he said, you know, one thing, he said, I, I've been to a lot of church buildings, but he said, I felt like Jesus was here today. He said, I've been to churches where I've never felt Jesus, but I felt like Jesus was here today. You know, that's what I want people saying. Not just here at North Charlestown Church of God, but everywhere present where the gospel is being presented, where the Word of God is being presented. I felt Jesus today. I believe Jesus is in this place today. I know that something's happened in this place. I want that to be in our hearts today. Because again, if we go into an empty building, that's all that's there. You know how I know Jesus is here? The same way you do. I brought Him with me. Was He in your heart before you left home today? He's still in your heart when you come into the building today then, isn't He? Keep that in mind when we bring Him with us. And again, I'm talking about His Spirit, of course. People can sense that. People can feel the power of God in your life. If this man, verse 33, if this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Do we believe on the Son of God? Believe that He died for our sins, that He was buried, and on the third day arose again. Amen. That He was seen of many infallible proofs for 40 days and 40 nights, and uh, again afterwards He ascended to heaven. Then I believe about seven days later they were gathered together in an in a upper room, and all of a sudden God poured out the Holy Ghost upon the church. Remember, <coughs> Simeon was waiting to hear the salvation of the Lord, or to see the Lord's salvation. And God showed him through the Holy Ghost. Well, let's pray that the Lord will show us through the Holy Ghost how to help other people see the salvation of the Lord. How to help us to make sure we're seeing the salvation of the Lord in our walk with God. Let's stand this morning. If you will. We have a choir practice tonight, Steve. Choir practice, don't forget that. My eyes have seen thy salvation. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I'm so glad God did something in my life and your life too, aren't you? I'm glad He took a mess and made something out of it. Again, I'm, not, I'm still the same person as far as the characteristics, but at the same time, God put a different heart in me. How about you? That old stony heart I once had, again, I wasn't the worst person of all. Who cares? That don't make no difference. God changed my heart. 
I was a good old boy. A lot of people say, he was a good old boy. You run around with us dragging party and you had a good old time. Well, sure I did. I was headed to a good old hell at the same time too, you know, right? I shouldn't say good old hell. That's a, well, whatever. But you know what I'm saying. There ain't nothing good about hell. But anyway, I know that God changed my heart. How about you? And if you don't know that today, make sure before you leave this place, all you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. When I say call, I'm talking about in truth. I need a Savior. I'm a mess. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life because it ain't getting no better. Uh, maybe you got all the money you need, but you still ain't happy. Maybe you don't have any money and you feel like that would be the answer. I'm going to tell you that's not going to be the answer either. Whatever, if you got much or little, whatever. If you got prestige or don't have prestige. If you got a name that everybody knows or you don't have a name, I want to tell you there's only one name that will make a difference. <laughs> and that's the name of Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's help a lost and dying world to know that. Again, I know that we're not big in numbers today, but at the same time, let's be big in heart. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, are you here today and you have a need? These altars are open for you. If you're watching or listening another time, I want to pray a prayer of salvation with you. If you'll agree with us this morning, or no, whatever it is, but just a simple prayer. This Lord Jesus, forgive me. I've messed up in my life and I need salvation. I repent of my sins and I ask you to come into my heart. Save my soul. Change my heart and mind to the way you want it. And I confess with my mouth Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God has raised Him from the dead. And right now, I accept salvation by faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I believe for it. I receive it. They got a song to play. If you want to come to these altars for whatever reason, you're welcome to do so.
because it's time. Oh, 